This conference will now be recorded. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Len Petroselli. I'm the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals, and we are conducting this virtual hearing under the governor's guidelines. Uh, with us tonight are, I'll, I'll go through the uh, members. Annette Streets is here. Mary Young is here. Uh, I'm here, and we're going to have uh, Ron Tickey sitting in for Lorenzo Elder, and we'll have Judy Clary sitting in for Gavin Forrester. Uh, before we get also here is Alex Florick, <clears throat> our attorney, Jay Abansky, our zoning zoning person, our secretary, Gail DeCilio, and I'm, I don't think I'm missing anybody, am I? No. Just right, our new zoning enforcement officer, Dan Brennan. Okay, Dan Brennan is new and he will be with us from now on. Before we get started, I do want to apologize to everyone for what happened at the beginning of the month, having to postpone the meeting. But as a chairman, I will say that uh, all the people on this committee are very committed, and that was a very unusual thing to happen, to have to change the meeting. But fortunately, we were able to get together and have the meeting prior to waiting another two weeks. All right, with that, I'd like to get started. I will start off by saying we do need to table 170 Oranork Lane. The uh, petitioners asked to put that off until next month, so I'd entertain a motion to table. Mary Young, motion to table. Motion by Ms. Young, second. And that second. street, Gaines. second. Second, Ron Tickey. All right, any discussion on the motion? Ooh. Actually, there's no discussion on the table. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried, carried unanimously. Mr. Second. Chairman? Yes. This is Jay Havansky here. Uh, I just got an email from Gavin. He said he's on the line, so I've unmuted our callers. I want okay. to give him an opportunity to speak up so I can label him. Okay. I have, I have arrived at the meeting. I'm still having technical trouble trying to log on via internet, but I am on via the telephone. Thanks, Gavin. All right, since Gavin is on now and he's a regular member, we'll have him sit in and let Judy sit out for the time being, but Ron Tiki can cover for Lorenzo Elder. All right, with that said, Ms. Young, would you read the Broadridge Avenue petition into the record? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mary Young, uh, 20, <clears throat> forgive me, 2037 Broadbridge Avenue, petition of Carrie L. Whitman, seeking a site plan review and waivers of section 4.2 and section 14.2 to allow for a total allowable building coverage from 25% to 25.8% to construct an addition while conducting fire repairs to a single family dwelling in RS-4 zone, hardship, undersized lot regarding lot coverage. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Young. And Ms. Whitman, are you presenting the petition or is someone else gonna present it? I'm actually here, but my architect, um, Doug McMillan, is also on the call. Okay, uh, just when you speak, make sure you identify yourself with your name and your address. So whoever okay. wants to go first, go ahead. Doug, do you want to talk or do you want me to talk? Uh, doesn't matter to me, Carrie. If you want to go, go ahead. Okay. My name's Carrie Whittem, 2037 Barbridge Avenue, Stratford, Connecticut, 06614. Um, I am coming to the, the board um, because I'm looking for a hardship um, approval. My lot was created as a building lot when the area was developed and there were no zoning regulations. Um, now the minimum lot size in my area is 7,500 square feet. I only have 5,000 square feet and I am going from um, what I currently was at 26% um, uh, percent back down to 25.8. So I'm just looking for approval on that. Thank you. Thank you. Does your architect want to speak or? Uh, the only Doug McMillan, I'm the architect for Kerry Whittem. Uh, the only thing I think Kerry covered it that you know the house predates zoning. It was built in like 1910 or so. Uh, we have an undersized lot, um, and we also, if we were on a 7,500 square foot lot, 25% um, coverage is uh, 1,875 square feet. Even with our overage um, of the basically the 0.8% our house footprint is 1,290. So we are well below 
what's allowed in that area. It's not like we're pushing way up on the uh, on the coverage. We're we're well below it. So um, from what you'd be allowed at 7,500 square feet. So due to the, the size of the lot, we feel we have the hardship with that that case. And we meet all other aspects of zoning. We meet building height, floor area setbacks, uh, front rear side setbacks. So we're conforming in all aspects. Thank you. Questions from the commissioners? Ms. Young. Thank you, Mary Young, for the record. Uh, Ms. Whitman, I want to acknowledge uh, the reason that brought you before the board. I'm so sorry that <laughs> there was a fire. Uh, and I also wanted to ask you or your architect, you decide who responds. If you've had a chance to read uh, Jay Habansky's Jan April 21st staff comments to the board describing your application. Yes, I did. And I'm not sure if you had uh, the opportunity to see the um, um, letter from my neighbor who is in favor of this. I don't know if it got to you guys or not. Speaking with respect to Jay's uh, comments to the board of April 21st, Jay acknowledges the undersized lot. He also talks about how your lot width is also non-conforming and might also be a rationale for granting the hardship. So I just wanted to get that on the record and I don't have any other specific questions, but just want to extend my sympathy again to you for being in the circumstance that brings you before the board. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for having a special meeting because I was in tears. <laughs> well, we weren't happy to have to cancel either, but it's very unusual for this board because everybody's pretty committed. So thank you. Unfortunately, you happen to have to petition when one meeting got canceled. And the commission <laughs> have any other questions? Hearing none, is there anyone here that wishes to speak in favor of this petition? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Jay Habansky. Uh, the the letter in support was sent to the uh, our computer services, but doesn't look like I'm not seeing it on the website, so I'd be happy to read that this brief letter into the record for the commission. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, to whom it may concern, I am writing in reference to the construction which is anticipated for my neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Robert Whitham of 2370 Broadbridge Avenue. I am happy to be supportive of this upcoming project for them and look forward to their uh, residence being renovated. I'm sure that you will expedite their request as it was also a welcome addition to our neighborhood. If you need to contact me further, please feel free to do so as my information is listed above, respectfully submitted, Rosemary uh, Marmalejo. I'd also Thank like in for the record you um whoever called my name it's actually carrie l Whitham, w-h-i-t-h-a-m i don't know if it was just pronounced wrong in the reading but i just want to make it right for the record all right thank you again i'll ask is there anyone else here that wishes to speak in favor of this petition anyone wish to speak in opposition to this petition anyone wish to speak in opposition Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close this one. Mary Young, motion to close. My motion by Ms. Young. Is there a second? You can raise your hand. And then second, street, Ron. second. Okay, second street. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. All right, number three, Pauline Street. Uh, Miss Ryan, Mr. Tickey, can you read that into the record, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to call to the record 299 Pauline Street, petition of Andrew Martin seeking a site plan review and waiver for section 4.1.6.14C3, allowing a maximum of 25% of the total livable floor area of the residence to allow for the establishment of an accessory apartment incidental to a single family dwelling in a RS4 zone. Um, the hardship seek is uh, owner has Parkinson's disease. Mother-in-law will help with long-term care so wife can work. Thank you, Mr. Tickey. I see Mr. Martin, are you doing the presentation? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, just state your name and address for the record and you're on. My name is and Andrew Martin, 299 Pauline Street, Stratford, Connecticut, 06615. 
Okay, you can now make your presentation if you wish. Um, yeah, I want to build a uh, an in-law apartment with a, a, I'm going to knock down my existing garage and I want to put in a, a, a two-car garage with an uh, in-law apartment above it. Um, the, my, I, I have a typical cape for the, for the neighborhood. Uh, I think my livable square footage for uh, floor space is 2,100 square feet, if I got it right. Uh, and 2221, 20, and I'm looking to put in a 650 square foot apartment. And uh, by code, I'm only allowed 550. So I'm asking for a, a 100 square foot uh, variance to accommodate the uh, the the apartment. Okay, thank you. And commissioners, any questions of Mr. Martin? I'll ask once more. Any questions of Mr. Martin? Ms. Young. I was hoping others might start first. I wasn't monopolizing everyone's time, but thank you, Mary Young, for the record. Uh, Mr. Martin, as you heard me ask the last applicant, our planning and zoning administrator prepares comments for the board members posted on the town's website for each application. Have you had an opportunity to review his comments on yours dated April 21st? Yeah, I think he uh, said that it was not in keeping with the uh, with this with the, uh, the with the neighborhood and that uh, Parkinson's is not considered a hardship. Uh, that's fair fair enough for a summary. So, uh, like the last applicant, uh, I'm sure you would prefer to be doing other things and not appearing before the zoning board of appeals based upon the circumstances that brings you before us. Uh, so can you give me something to substitute for a hardship that would allow us if we were so inclined to grant you the variance because our planning and zoning administrator i think accurately cites the case law thank you um yeah i didn't was unclear as to what a uh, hardship is um for, uh, as far as you guys are concerned um uh, the, the whole reason i i can't uh, you know make up a hardship the whole reason for building the apartment was so that uh, my mother-in-law can move in and and help with uh, I have Parkinson's disease and uh, you know I'm so as 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 I am as it stands right now I'm still pretty functional I'm working but uh, you know that might not uh, I, I don't know how long that'll 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 be so uh, she would live in the apartment and, and help with the mortgage and uh, and help with you know help with my care on a daily basis so um, you know as far as uh, a, Lord, a hardship that meets your standard. I, I guess I don't have one. Um, I thought uh, if, you know, if Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease isn't a hardship, I don't know what is. But uh... any other commissioners have questions of Mr. Martin? Hearing none, is there anyone here that wishes to speak in favor of this petition? Anyone wish to speak in favor of the petition? Anyone wish to speak? in opposition of the petition. Anyone wish to speak in opposition of the petition? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the petition. And just and raise your hand. So moved. I'll second. <laughs> moved by Ms. Young, second by Annette Streets. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh, petition is closed. Uh, Ms. Streets, if you would read the last one, Main Street Putney, into the record, please. Uh, Annette Streets, for the record. 6284 Main Street Putney, petition of Brian Joseph Gorlo seeking a site plan review and variance of section 3.11 to construct a shed 9.8 feet from the front property line when the maximum setback is 75 feet, incidental to a two-family dwelling in an RS1 zone. The hardship being the south side of the property is, river, is a river with wetlands. The north side has a town sewer easement. So this is the only spot meeting the three-quarter size available. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gorlo, are you, I'm looking, who's, who wants to, who's presenting this petition for Main Street Putney? My name is Brian Gorlo, I'm here. 
Okay, go ahead, Mr. Garlow. Yes, um, I built the house in 2004. Many people know my house. I'll try not to get choked up in this call because the reason why we're putting in a shed is because we're in the middle of restoring a 1954 Willys A1 um, Jeep that we'd like to be able to bring up to the war museum and we need a place to put it and to store it. And um, my father's 86, I'm ex-Navy, he's ex-Army. So we're dedicating this Jeep to the 8th Army because it served in Korea, it served in Vietnam, and then the Forestry Service. So if you're looking at my house from Main Street Putney, um, many people know the tan house with the red barn garage. Um, the shed would technically be 43 feet off the street. The first 32 feet is an easement because there's a sewer that runs from Founders Way to Main Street Putney. And then it cuts at my driveway into a Y down what used to be Emma Johnson Lane, which runs from Main Street Putney to River Road. So I've got a good third of the property that's full sewer easements um, that I worked on with uh, Casey and Engineering when I built the house in 04. And then I've got Freeman's Brook and Upland Review on the other side. So to be completely out of anybody's way in case there was ever a reason to work on the sewers, um, this is a nice clean spot. Um, in character with the neighborhood, um, I have a red barn there now. It will match that. And many houses, if you're familiar with Booth and that area, I mean, you look at the corner of Chapel, that house um, is maybe 18, 20 feet off the road. Uh, the one next to me that just sold is probably 30 feet off the road. Many houses in that area from the chapel are, you know, 20, 30, 35, 40 feet off the road. So it's in character with the neighborhood. I just want to put the uh, shed there. So Coach Mastroni, um, Sergeant Bruno, they'll be able to take the Jeep anytime they want and just bring it five houses up to the War Museum and put it on display out front as a dedication to my father and to other veterans like myself who served. But I just need a place to put it. Um, and, I, and I'd like the shed to be out of the way. Um, so it's not, you know, in the upland or view or what wetlands or anything like that. It fully meets all wetland setbacks and lot coverage setbacks. So it's a nice clean spot. We leveled it out already. So it could be brought in and dropped and, and encroach past where we built in 04 with the old wetlands department. So everything on my site and my property has always been 100% compliant. I'd like to keep it that way. And um, I thank you all for your time tonight. And I hope you just grant me uh, this uh, setback. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions? No. <clears throat> Once more, any questions from the commissioners? <laughs> Ms. Young. <laughs> Once again, trying to give others a chance, but here I am, Mary Young for the record. Uh, to the applicant, same question as the prior applicants. Have you had a chance to review the staff comments prepared by our planning and zoning administrator dated April 21st, posted on the town's website concerning your application? Actually, ma'am, I have not. Um, it's been the past week. I didn't realize they'd have a when Tiny called me looking for a new hearing. I didn't look. Um, I'm at a family celebration for Thomas Joseph um, Doherty right now. Um, we just buried him today, and I'm at the Naps Landing right now sitting in a car um, at the family celebration. So I have not had time to review if there were any questions, but feel free to fire away. Uh, there's so much on your plate. Uh, first of all, your the purpose for why you're seeking the variance is laudable and congratulations to you on all your efforts to date and I'm sorry for the circumstances that find you participating in the hearing this evening. Uh, going back to my question, Mr. Habansky in his staff report is talking to us about whether or not he's perceived there being any viable alternatives negating the need for a variance and in his staff report he puts out a hypothetical, a what-if scenario how about if this new shed were next to the air conditioning units or deck? Can you respond to that? Uh, that would be a big problem because if we drill for wetlands and we go to the upland review and drill 50 feet off of the wetlands, we would be 100% um, in violation of that. The house right now is right on top of the setback. When the old wetlands officer prior to the new one, Kelly Kerrigan, 
we went through all this in 04 when that house was completely renovated. It was basically a tear down and built. That whole area fell into the same problem I have of being 50 feet off the pins that are in the lower level now. My property is all tiered. I have three to four tiers, depending how you measure it. And unfortunately, in that location, um, we, w we would not be able to meet wetland setbacks. So this is the cleanest spot to not have to be in the way of any excavators or work or sewer or any wetlands or damage to wetlands, runoff, et cetera. It was very well thought out as to where could this thing go to not be in a problem. And that's why that area wasn't selected. Plus, wouldn't be able to get in there and, and bring one in there. That's, that would be the, it would have to be built on site if something was there, but it would be 100% wetland violation, big problem. Thank you, Mr. Gorlo. Mary Young speaking again. Mr. Hrabanski, you heard Mr. Gorlo. Uh, do you want to add anything now that you've heard his response to something offered in your staff report? Uh, Jay Hrabanski here. Um, so prior to me, as I was writing my staff comments, prior to suggesting these alternatives, I, I did speak with the wetlands, uh, the conservation administrator, and she was uh, receptive to the, those my proposed uh, site selection for the for the shed. Uh, I mean, it would have to go back for an upland review, um, but it, it did not appear as though that this would be in violation of the wetlands uh, any wetlands setback for the Inland Wetlands Water Courses Commission. Um, and I can't speak for someone who's not here, but prior to me recommending these locations, I did vet them with. The conservation administrator and she did not have a problem with them. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Mayor Young, and I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Young. Any other commissioners have questions of Mr. Gorel? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this petition? Anyone wish to speak in favor? Anyone in opposition to this petition? Anyone wish to speak in opposition? Yes, yeah, in opposition to this petition. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the petition. Motion by Mr. Forrester. Is there a second? Annette Street, by, second. Second by Annette Street. So all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Can I, aye. Can I maybe aye. say one last thing, guys, or no? What's that? Can I say one last thing, or no? Yeah, we'll let you. We'll, we'll, we'll. Go ahead. Not that I'd like to uh, disagree with Jay because Jay's a very talented and smart man. But coach and sergeant, and if that shed was over there, they would not be able to take the Jeep in and out freely. Where this is now, the key is for me to give them a set of keys to take it on Memorial, Labor Day, et cetera, and be able to, they can drive in and drive out. Older guys, driving a clutch, driving an old Jeep. They, you know, it's a nice, easy in and out. If you guys ever drove by my property and, where you're suggesting where anything was a problem before, that's why I couldn't extend the house out. It, nobody would be able to get in and out of there. They'd actually have to drive down through wetlands to get it up in and out. And that would, that kind of defeats the purpose of everything being clean in and out and no soil damage and no runoff and no damage to the current wetlands. So this is a nice clean spot. And that's, and then I'd have to pay for all re wetlands and everything else with surveyors. So, that's why this was very well thought out. A lot of time was put into it. And I worked with Kelly to make sure she was cool with the spot, met her setbacks, all the stakes are in, and we'd be nice and clean. So I hope you authorize it, and I uh, appreciate your time and your patience. Ms. Young? Uh, I don't know if you need us to make motions to go back into public hearing if I want to comment on the closing comments from the applicant or if I should just keep talking. I suppose legally we should just reopen a public hearing, just in case. Uh, so if you need a motion to resume the public hearing, I so move. Ms. Young, is there a second? Second yes, by Captain Forrester. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carried unanimously. Ms. Young, you're on. Uh, so something I heard the applicant say prompted me to want to ask another question. Uh, so it sounds like if I heard correctly, <clears throat> logistically, uh, this would be your proposal as a preferred location logistically. Are you uh, suggesting that this is somewhat temporary in nature, this need, and 
If so, are you willing to accept a condition that this will be removed after the need dissipates and the uh, wonderful car is relocated? Uh, it's tough to spend 9000 on a uh, little building uh, to house it and then want to demo the building. Um, if we, if, you know, um, I'd rather go into it being upfront and honest and having it in a safe place so there's never a problem. Um, or if I removed or we had something happen in the family where we had to sell the house. God knows DJ was 43 and he dropped and we never thought he would drop. You never know. God forbid something happened to me. I wouldn't want my wife to have to deal with the situation um, with a building. So that's why we really tried to make this clear and in character with the neighborhood. We wanted to keep it, you know, 43 feet back from the road is more than plenty versus 75. There's just a lot with wetlands and everything else. There's just too many setbacks with this property. I've conceded with the town and given other things with uh, the sewers. Uh, I'm just hoping you all could be pretty gracious and just, you know, let this be as is. Thank you. I have no further questions. Yes, ma'am. Any other commissioners have any other questions? All right, quickly, anyone wish to speak in favor of this since we've reopened it? Anyone wish to speak in opposition? Entertain a motion to close. Motion to close, Mary Young. Second by Gavin Forrester. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. I'd ask for polls, but everybody said aye, so I don't have to do that. All right, can we entertain a motion to close the public portion? Mary Young, motion to close the public portion. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Forrester. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, aye. Aye. None cared unanimously. Now, when we go into the uh, administrative session, I'm going to ask if someone would make a motion to move Main Street Putney up to number one so that Mr. Gorlo can get back to where he really should be. So I would entertain, ask for a motion now to move Main Street Putney up to the first on the agenda. Mary Young, motion to move uh, Main Street up on the agenda. Is there a motion by Mr. Yeah. Just seconded by Mr. Forrester? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Carried aye. unanimously. All right. What is your pleasure with Main Street Putney? Take it off the table. Mary Young, motion to take it off the table. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Tickey. Any discussion on taking it off the table? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carried unanimously. It's off the table. Discussion. Hearing none, would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve with the hardship being the um, aforementioned easements and wetlands issues. Okay, motion by Mr. Forrester. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Ticket. Any discussion on the motion to approve? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call. Mr. Forrester? Yes. Mr. Tickey? Yes. Ms. Young? Yes. Ms. Street? Yes. Chair votes yes, motion is approved. You're all set, Mr. Gorley, you can go back. Thank you all very much. You're welcome. Have a good night. All right, back to Broadridge Avenue. Off the table, make a motion. Mary Young, motion to take Broadridge off the table. Is there a second? I'll second. second. Forrester, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Here unanimously, it's off the table. What is your pleasure? Ms. Young. Uh, Mary Young, I'd like to make a motion to grant the variances, uh, the hardship being undersized lot and undersized lot width. All right, motion by Ms. Young. Is there a second? Annette Street, second. Okay, Annette Street, second. Any discussion on Ms. Young's motion to approve? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 
Chair votes yes. Mo <coughs> Petition is approved. All right, finally, Pauline Street, motion to take it off the table. Mary Young, motion to take 299 Pauline Street off the table. Motion by Ms. Young. Is there a second? Annette Street, second. Annette Street, second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Carried. Aye. Discussion on Pauline Street. Ms. Young. Uh, so, having read Mr. Habansky's staff comments, he was aware of the applicant's stated hardship, but informs us that that is not recognized under current case law as being a valid hardship that can support the granting of a variance. We have our town attorney on the call if anyone wants to dive deeper on that to pursue it. And that's unfortunate uh, because uh, for Speaking for myself only, it's certainly a case that what makes one want to grant a variance, but I know we also are under the obligation to reduce risks in the town of Stratford by only granting variances when we think they can be supported under case law. So I, for one, am conflicted and look forward to hearing from others. Mr. Florek. Is he still here? Alex. Oh, there you are. Yes, I'm here. Sorry about that. Sorry about, about well, that. Mr. Mr. Mayor, if this was approved, what would what would be the liability factor? Uh, you know, not terribly great. It doesn't seem to be a very uh, a big project, and uh, any any neighbor who is adjacent or within 100 feet of the property would have 15 days to bring an appeal to court. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I don't I don't think it's a it's a very uh, complicated issue. All right, thank you, Mr. Vancey. I just wanted to say that I, I agree with Attorney Florek, and you know I take no pleasure in uh, in making folks' life, lives more difficult than they already are coming to these meetings. And I know you all understand. Uh, you know my job; I get paid by the town to protect protect its protect the town from liability and our, make sure our commissioners are armed with the uh, the best information possible. Um, and I certainly sympathize with the applicant here. I I, I can just attest that. Uh, two rounds of letters were sent out to the applicants, uh, abutting neighbors, letting them know the first meeting and letting them know uh, about this special meeting here. Uh, I have received no opposition to the project. I just wanted to let, let the commission know. Okay. Unfortunately, the applicant isn't allowed to speak unless the, 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 the chair or the, the board votes so. All right, let me let Commissioner Young go next. Uh, Attorney Florek, just as a follow up to your statement. Am I hearing that, uh, in your view, one could cite ADA accommodations as a rationale to support the granting of a variance? I uh, I didn't think of that angle, but uh, it, it, it's possible. It is possible. Uh, I know that we had discussed that in the past, perhaps last year, but uh, I suppose you could uh, you could bootstrap a, 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 a hardship, a legal hardship, with the ADA. Uh, I don't recall anything else being offered into the record other than that. So uh, if you think that would uh, be palatable from a legal risk standpoint, since it appears those who would have legal standing are in fact supportive of this application, I for one would then make a motion to approve this, citing ADA accommodations as the hardship. But I wonder if there's a second. Is there a second? And that streets, I second it. All right, second by Annette Streets. Is there any discussion on Commissioner Young's motion? Uh, Annette Streets, um, I just want to commend uh, Commissioner Young for um, thinking about um, ADA considerations. Uh, I think probably all of us uh, wanted to uh, find some way to uh, legally uh, grant this uh, petition without um, you know, putting um, our, our town in any kind of jeopardy. And so I, I wanna thank her for uh, thinking about that, uh, that particular uh, ADA need. Thank you. And, and, to, and to go off on that, yeah, thank you, Ms. Young. I don't know what we're gonna do when you're gone. Who's gonna come up with these uh, ideas? Jay, it's gonna be all on you. And a new uh, enforcement officer. So yeah, it's yeah. going to be on Dan now. Dan's going to have to be the bad guy going forward. 
<laughs> Any further discussion on this petition? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call, Mr. Tiki. Yes. yes. Ms. Young? Yes. Mr. Forrester? Yes. Ms. Streets? Yes. The chair votes yes. The petition is approved. Thank you. All right, we can move on now to the approval of minutes from April 6th. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Mr. Forrester. Is there a second? Mary Young, I second. And does Mr. Martin know he was approved? I think I so. Do. I, just wanted to, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Young. Thank you all. You're welcome. Thank you for being patient and waiting an extra couple of weeks. No problem. Thank you. Good night. All right, there's a second for the minutes. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, Carrie aye. Cam site plan review. Mr. Habansky. Nothing. Uh, Mr. Chairman Jay Habansky, we've got no new items for coastal site plan review. Thank you, Mr. Habansky. Members' concerns and comments. I knew you would raise your hand. <laughs> uh, Mary Young, I have two. Uh, Christine, welcome. I I think Jay was not sure if you had been sworn in. Can you answer that question? Have you been sworn in or is that to be scheduled? I have been sworn in this afternoon. I'm sorry we didn't see you tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're sworn in. Again, welcome. Thank you. Um, my second topic, uh, if the chairman will indulge me, is to think about planning ahead as it relates to future scheduled meetings of the Board of Zoning Appeals. As That's you know, we, my, can we can do that under five, Mr. Chairman. Very good. I'll wait my turn. That's all I got. Any other members of concerns or comments? All right, then we'll go to item five, in-person meetings. Ms. Young. Forgive me for not seeing that on the agenda. So I put out an email uh, when there was some discussions offline about next time and where will we be in a go-to meeting or in the council chambers. And you know, hearing one of our applicants tonight and his concerns for uh, ADA accommodations, I think that in and of itself tells me that this is a better forum for those people who might otherwise be challenged by uh, the mechanics of getting in and out of town hall. And I, for one, uh, would recommend that we continue these meetings so long as the town attorney uh, tells us we have authority to do so and thought it might be worthwhile hearing from others. But I wanted you to hear my point of view. Thank you. Mr. Urbanski, are all the other, I know the council is going to start in person in June. Are all the other committees also, as far as you know? I mean, I can't see some doing it and some not. I don't think the mayor would be thrilled with that. Well, um, you know, I, and I've had conversations with the mayor about it, and she wants the boards to do what they feel, what they feel comfortable doing, which is a part of the reason why we pulled everybody ahead of time. Um, just to see, and I know, Mr. Chairman, you, you spoke last last month about you know who's comfortable doing what and and it's all hypotheticals really at the moment because uh, you know many of at least from my understanding and conversations with the town attorney uh not necessarily mr florick but uh some of our other town attorneys representing the other boards um you know assuming that the governor does not extend the executive order that's set to expire on, on may may 20th uh there will not be an option for for virtual meetings um, and you know Miss Young and myself we are in some interesting um, left to make some interesting decisions over these next few weeks without really understanding what's going to be happening and um, you know I was advised to, to schedule our next meeting our first meeting after May 20th as an in-person meeting in the event that there isn't an opportunity to run a virtual meeting so um, you know at first my my gut was telling me i want all the boards doing the same thing uh as, as things have progressed uh we've got a new staff member here uh one that's very capable uh I, and, and after speaking with the town planner 
I am less concerned about if one board decides uh, if, if the executive order is extended, I'm less concerned about individual boards keeping uh, meetings remote if they so choose that, that that's what fits that board best. So, um, yeah, that's my position. I think I've grown a little bit on it and um, I'll just, I'll, I'll leave that with the board. So on May 20th, we may have no options if he doesn't extend it. Well, th that's the understanding that we've gotten from from uh, council. Uh, I would I would certainly defer to, to Attorney Florick, uh, and I, yes. I'm interested to hear if if um, uh, Commissioner Young has any other information at, with her capacity as a Planning and Zoning Director as well. Mr. Attorney Florick, is if it's not extended, then you have no options. Is that true or not? That that. This is Attorney Florica. That, that's my understanding. I would be surprised if the governor doesn't extend it. Uh, I, I think that in the past, some of his uh, extensions of his own emergency powers have come at the 11th hour. So I would just keep your eyes peeled this week and see if he extends it again. Um, but yeah, I, I, absent that, I don't, I'm not sure that the, the ZBA would have the authority to keep having virtual meetings. Ms. Young? Uh, thank you, Mayor Young. So I, I agree with Attorney Florick. I, the word on the street uh, is that the governor is going to wait until the 11th hour like he's done with every other executive order because God forbid he plan ahead, forgive me. <laughs> um, uh, the word on the street is that he will extend it, which is why I think it's very appropriate, Mr. Chairman, that you put this on the agenda so that Mr. Herbansky has a sense of the meeting with respect to if given discretion, what next steps should he take so he doesn't have to schedule a special meeting to talk to us all over again. And I once again uh, would put my name in the hat for continuing remote meetings if given the legal authority to do so. And I think distinguishing the Board of Zoning Appeals from the other boards is very easy. What we do runs with the land. When you grant a variance, it doesn't go away. It runs with the land and one property owner gets to convey it to the next one and it lives forever longer than the rest of us. You can't say that for too many other decisions that other boards make. Thank you. All right, I just want to say the June 1st meeting, if we can, I would rather do that in person because of, you know what, we're going to have quite a few people coming to speak about Oranor and it'd be much easier to do that if they were there in person. And then after that, if we want to go back to remote, but that's just going to be a, a hairy situation, which I'm sure, Jay, you're aware of. And Attorney Floor, we have to get together before that, too. Uh, forgive me for interrupting again. Uh, I was in a quote-unquote hairy situation earlier this week, or last week, I should say, uh, during my day job where we had 70 people participating in a Zoom remote meeting and we handled it just fine and we found since there was so much public interest uh, many of those 70 people would not have been able to join they tell us if they had to stop what they were doing get in their car drive down town hall etc cetera, etc cetera. so again the feedback I'm getting this one year plus from the public I've worked with is that they benefit from this flexibility, allowing them to zoom in or go to a meeting, as the case may be, from wherever they are. They don't have to physically get to town hall. I still stick to my guns on June 1st. I'd rather do that one in person. Well, you know what? We're having a discussion we may not even have to have if he doesn't extend the executive power. So why don't we wait and see what happens? When is the 20th? Oh, the day after everybody can go to a bar and sit next to each other with no mask and rub elbows and see what happens with that. A Thursday to answer your question, I believe. Yeah, it is Thursday. <laughs> it is Thursday. Anyone else want to weigh in on in-person meetings? Any thoughts? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, Ms. Brees or Ms. Clary, did you want to say anything? Mr. I'm Bass, do you want to say something or? Only after this item was closed. I just, before we adjourn, I have, I have just one thing to mention. Sure. Go ahead. Just remember, it's a special meeting. If it's not on the agenda, we got to be careful. Absolutely. Uh, I just wanted to, to again, uh, to, for anyone that wasn't here, I wanted to introduce Daniel Brennan. 
our new zoning right. enforcement have to be on agenda. <laughs> zoning enforcement officer. Uh, Dan has lots of zoning experience, uh, working as a zoning enforcement officer for the city of Bridgeport, as well as for Brantford. So not only does he have the uh, local experience, but also in a coastal community, which I think was something that was really important in our decision to hire Dan um, here for the town of Stratford, giving all of our work that we're doing uh, regarding our coastline. So I just wanted to, to extend a welcome to Dan. Uh, Dan will be staffing the Zoning Board of Appeals over the coming months. Um, so this is not a goodbye for me, but a slow transition as Dan gets more comfortable here with Stratford. So. Uh, again, welcome, Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I would also suggest that commissioners have any time. I'm mean, I'm going to make an appointment with Jay to come in and meet Daniel too. But if you have any time, just pop in for 10 or 15 minutes and just get to know him. All right. Anybody else before we adjourn? Just remember, it's got to be listed on the agenda. It's a special meeting. I'm Mary, I just wanted to say thank you to the chairman for doing as much as he has to all these remote meetings. Hasn't been easy, but you've been doing a great job, and thank you. Well, thank you, Mary, for all your suggestions. I tell you, we're going to, believe it or not, I'm going to miss you when you're gone. And so you can't run again because of term limits. <laughs> <laughs> Entertain a motion to adjourn. Mary Young, motion to adjourn. Your second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. And once again, I'd aye. like to thank everybody for making this special meeting possible. Thanks again. Good night.